Hey everyone! Hi! Hope you're all doing well. It's been a while, but finally we are starting a new concept creation series. This time around we are going to be creating a concept art for a Thieves Guild headquarters environment. Our aim is to create a comprehensive concept for this environment and later on we are going to work on bringing it to life in Unreal Engine 5 with our own hand-painted <laughs> textures. Yeah. I've actually been using Unreal Engine 5 a lot lately for my book covers because usually I do the renders in Blender but lately I've been kind of moving over to Unreal Engine 5 um, so we'll be actually introducing that into our workflow for the first time on Polycosm which is very exciting. Uh, so we're going to take you guys through the process of kind of creating modular assets which means basically being able to reuse like one model more than once like and kind of create new models out of like different parts and stuff like that so yeah yeah so we are going to be trying out some new things with this one um so i'm guessing there will be a lot of oh i thought this would work but i guess it doesn't moments along the way like but, always yeah <laughs> But, you know, we that's what we do. We always try different things and try to figure out new workflows. And we hope you guys will find the whole process quite fun and informative. Also, part one of our new Clip Studio Paint tutorial is out on their English channel. Mm -hmm. um, I've also created a playlist on our channel, which is basically just like Clip Studio Paint like collaboration videos. So you can go check it out there. Or I'll add the link in the description below. So, yeah. Yeah, and before we begin, I wanted to thank our sponsors for this episode. <laughs> Shitty mobile game that's designed to manipulate you into spending money. So, Yay! thanks Shitty Mobile Game for your sponsorship. Excellent. Right then, we are very excited to get this started. Are yes. you excited? Yes. I'm very excited as well, you can tell by my excited face. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> let's get started. Yeah. Thanks again for all your support so far, and we hope you'll enjoy this new series. Yeah, bye. bye guys. Okay, you guys know how this goes. It's always a good idea to start with some research. Even with a subject that you're pretty knowledgeable with, it's a good idea to spend some time researching and putting together a board of references and inspiration. When it comes to research, I suggest keeping an open mind and not just picking the first few hits you get on Google Images. Following various websites and blogs that focus on specific topics, investing into books, and making it a habit to take your own reference pictures when you're out and about will all help you create a wealth of resources that you can pull from. Now you'll realize that I got some works from other artists in here, and I'm trying to keep this to a minimum because I think this can be a little problematic. I think the problem with looking at work done by other artists too much is that in worst case scenario you might find yourself flying too close to plagiarism and in best case scenario your work might just end up looking like a cheap knockoff of that one or two specific artists you've been looking at. As you can see I have some student work from Fang Zhu's design school here and I'll be looking at these more as an example of the quality and level of detail that I want to reach eventually with this concept. I also gathered some set design photos from TV productions as this can be a great source of reference for designing fantasy or sci-fi environments but also for lighting and mood. I also pulled some references for specific objects that will come in handy later on. I really like starting out with a floor plan when it comes to designing an environment. Even if you end up making a super quick and dirty sketch like this, this stage can really help you solve a lot of problems and answer some important questions early on in the process. It's a lot faster to make changes at this stage, so I tend to take my time and really think about what this environment is for, who uses it and what sort of facilities will they need to exist here. We have a couple of other videos where I start out with this method if you want to learn more. You can find the links in the description below. I tend to make some quick notes around my drawings as well. This can help clarify my ideas better, but it also helps me remember certain aspects that I need to take into consideration when I'm sketching. I don't want to do the individual design of each asset at this stage just yet, but I'll do some quick sketches on the side for certain elements that I deem important. Those elements mostly come from the storytelling that will happen in this environment. I'm trying to imagine what the members of this Thieves Guild would need in this space. 
where they will plan their heists, keep their loot, craft potions or traps, and train. Maybe they will need a lounge area to relax and drink after a job well done. Or maybe they have training dummies made of straw that they use to test their weapons on or they practice their pickpocketing skills on these so you know they will have all these bells hanging on from them just things like this this is what i always think about when i'm drawing this answering questions like where is this headquarters is hidden how do they get in and what do they use for a light source will provide you with the details that will make this space feel natural and lived in I will go over my sketch with cleaner line art to make sure everything can be understood clearly. This is also a good opportunity to go over the overall design and make sure the scale doesn't look too off. I'm not too worried about that at this stage, that will come into more consideration in the next stage, but it's still a good idea to make sure the general size and scale of the environment and everything it contains makes sense to some degree. Try not to get tempted into zooming in and detailing things. This is really not about making a good looking piece of art just now. It's just a step to get us started and help us make better decisions later on. I think a lot of the time seeing really polished artwork makes people think that they are supposed to create something at that level right away and every time they sit down to work. The truth is, a lot of research, rough sketching and mistakes are a completely natural part of the process, but those parts don't get seen usually. Instead of rushing into something just to impress others, I'd suggest trying a methodical approach that will get you where you need to in calculated steps. In our next stage, when I'm drawing over the 3D blackout, I'll be paying more attention to the design of each individual asset, textures and other details. As you can see, I cleaned things up a bit and typed up some of my notes just to make this a cleaner page ready for presentation. I'm going to pass this over to Christina and she's going to use her blender magic to create a rough 3D blockout, which I'll be using to draw over and really get into the actual design for this environment. You'll be able to see the process of all that in our next video. That brings us to the end of part 1. This video was a little light on information and might seem like a slow start, but it's important to take your time to research and brainstorm ideas before you dive into the actual design process. Thanks for taking the time to watch this, and we'll see you in the next part. Take care everyone.